In this chapter of message crawler video manual, we talking about text message conversations. Yes, this is probably one of the most important chapters and you should watch this very carefully and learn as much as you can because how you group messages into conversations determine everything that's going to happen down the road, including review and productions. So let's get into it and talk about conversation field. Conversation field determines how many RSMF files you are going to have whenever you perform your conversion. Each time field map to conversation changes, it will start a new RSMF file. And it's also important to sort your data by conversation and then by ID before starting the conversion process. Some of the advantages and disadvantages of long and short conversations. If you have a long conversation, let's say you take entire Slack chat room and you put it into one giant RSMF file, well, that'll be great for review because all reviewers have to do is scroll down and keep going, keep going, and they can just read all the conversations. However, when you get to production stage of your project, well, you may not want to produce all the messages that are present. So what reviewers have to do is convert the document to an image and redact any messages that they don't want someone else to see. So shorter conversation, on the other hand, will be much better for this because now you can pick out only RSMF files with a few messages that you want to produce. And if there are a couple of conversations here and there you need to blank out, it's going to be much easier for the review team to do. The downside of this is, of course, you're going to have more RSMF files, so reviewers will have to click on the next button more times, which may or may not be a big deal. Now, some applications will generate conversation or group ident identifier for you. Uh, for example, Oxygen Forensics Relativity Expert generates a thread ID for you. ESI Analyst, they generate multiple thread IDs for you. And you are, of course, welcome to use those thread IDs or conversation identifiers to group your messages together. Uh, you can use Room ID or Slack ID or Google Hangout Chat ID. But in my experience, those conversations tend to be too long and I find that it's a good idea to break those up by date. And because of that, you can create conversation threads yourself inside Message Crawler. And there are two uh, distinct ways that people have been using uh, creating conversation feature. They would either use your room ID and a day to create multiple RSMF files. So each day per room or per conversation will be a separate RSMF file. The second way people have been using a message crawler to create conversation identifier is by doing name analysis. So we can take name from and to or multiple participants and we can uh, figure out unique combinations of people who were talking to one another. So let's say you get three or four people and they're all talking to each other, but they're not necessarily have same from and to because they send in messages back and forth. So what Message Crawler can do is it can identify this unique combination of people. And the way it'll do it is it'll take all the names from multiple fields, combine them all into one field, sort them alphabetically, remove all the duplicates and generate hash on that. And it's going to be your conversation identifier, which will group a unique uh, number of people having conversation with one another. And that's been very helpful whenever you get these uh, data dumps from multiple sources that don't really have a uh, well-defined structure where you can have messages on top, bottom, left, right. So they're all mixed together. And using name analysis is a great way to figure out who's talking to who. You put it into meaningful conversations that reviewers can actually make sense of. So what is the tool that we're going to use to generate conversation? Well, when you load data from... Uh, Slack or Bloomberg, you will get a conversation ID generated for you, but this is how you can take it further. And here we have three uh, fields or three criteria you can specify to generate a conversation. You don't have to use all three. You can use just one or two or, well, or all three. So number one is we can use a static field. So room ID, channel name, and so on. Uh, we can also combine that with a date, which is item number three on the PowerPoint. So you can pick whichever field has a date, like a timestamp, and you can apply a format mask to it. So in this case, the format mask is a D, which means it's going to take month, day, and year. So, so it's going to shorten down to a day. 
And what we will get here is a combination of a channel name plus a date, which is what we were talking about before. However, you can uh, look up at the date format help and you can look up other format masks you can use. So maybe you want to format down to a month. So this way you get all the conversation per channel within that month. And you can get really creative with these date uh, masks to figure out how you can group messages together. Now the section in the middle where you have names, this is where you'll pick from and to. And this is where we'll perform this name analysis where we'll combine names together and figure out unique combination of names. You don't have to do this. You can just go to step one and three or you can use all three at the same time or you can just use step number two. Now moving on to the right side of screenshot here is apply from parent. Whenever you create a conversation, you want to push it down to attachments. So if you have a field, let's say record type that has a value of attachment, this way those values will be carried over to the attachments and all will be kept together. So you'll be able to perform sorting and your families don't fall apart. Text cleanup. This is an interesting tool where you can apply a regular expression to remove any unusual characters. Uh, one use of it was if you want to just have phone numbers, let's say people have different names and sometimes phone numbers could be plus one or without a plus, well, you can use this feature to strip out all the names and just leave phone numbers and then perform your name analysis on just the phone numbers, which may give you better results. This is one of those features where you can uh, try it, experiment with it and see what kind of results you get. And you can try it over and over until you get results you like. And to help you with that, uh, we have an option called uh, conversation output. Normally conversation will return you a hash value based on the data that's going in. But if you check this checkbox, what you will get on the output is the actual string that was created from all these fields, from the name analysis, from the static field, from a date, all that thing will be uh, put together into one long string and output to a field. This way, when you run this tool, and something does not look how you want it to look or you're trying to understand why does it look like that. You can go to that field and you can look and understand what is actually happening during conversion process. Are you not selecting the right date field or you're not using the right mask and so on. So now with theory out of the way, let's jump to demo and play around with this generate conversation tool ourselves and see if we can make some conversations. All right, here we have message crawler. We have some data loaded. Let's go into data tools and go to generate conversations. Now here we can do a few things to generate a conversation. The easiest one would be is to use a timestamp. So if we're in a timestamp, we can format it down to a day and I'm going to select my record type. If that is ever an attachment, I want my conversation to be pushed down to the attachments. So let's just do a timestamp generate conversation. And now if I'm going to go all the way here, we see that our conversation is the same for all the dates and the timestamps, so all the day. And then once we get to our different day, 12.5, our hash value changes. So this is how we can create a conversation based on just the day. Now let's try generating a conversation based on unique number of participants in the conversation. So we're going to select from to, and again, I'm going to select my record type. I'm going to generate a conversation. So now we see that our conversation names are kind of jumping around. So let's do a quick sort. I'm going to do generate conversation and I'm going to sort it by ID as well. All right. So let's scroll over to the right. And in fact, let's move our conversation over. All right, I expanded our columns so we could easily see what's going on here. And if you look, we have a conversation between these two fictional people and the conversation is going back and forth. So we have different from and to names. However, our conversation is the same because those are the same people who are talking to one another. And if we scroll down, we'll find that the conversation ID changes because we have different people who are talking to one another and same thing happens further down. All right, so now instead of breaking our conversation by date, we are breaking it up by unique uh, participants in the conversation. And if we choose to, we could actually combine the two. And if we go back to our generate conversation, we can go to from to, we can pick our timestamp 
again we go into apply a record type generate conversation and now if we look here we should see our conversation change if it goes over a day and in our case it may be a little bit more difficult to spot because we only have two days in our in our collection 12.4 and 12.5 actually we will see that right here where we have conversation between these two people but on a different day and those get a different conversation identifier uh, based on a day when they were talking to each other now if we had a room id or some kind of static field we can pick that from here uh, which we don't have in this example but i'm sure you can understand how that works you simply pick that field and it will be used as one of the deduplication criteria. now let's take a look and see what happens behind the scenes when we perform this operation let's go to generate conversation select from to our timestamp again we're going to quickly do record type and now we're going to return a string instead of hash value and now you see that our conversation has been uh, sort of normalized we have a date field generated and then we have our participants so now you could see how uh, what message crawler is doing on the back end to identify a unique combination of people and just like we saw in the example before these two match exactly except by date and that is why they get different uh, conversation and lastly let's see how we can strip out the names and only leave phone numbers so let's go back to my from to we're gonna skip the date we don't need it this time we're gonna say remove character from reg regex and we are going to do um some i'm gonna look it up from here so we're just gonna say zero through nine All right so these are the characters we are leaving again we're going to make sure we get a record type and that checkbox and now you see that we're only looking at phone numbers and this person doesn't have a phone number has they have an email address so this would not be a good idea to use for somebody with an email address because now we just have number two left however if we scroll down over here we see these people do have phone numbers so now this is a good way of generate conversation and kind of clean up your data a uh, point here is you have to know your data so if you have email addresses you may not want to use this or you may get bad results and you have this option of outputting the actual values instead of hash values so you could visually see what's going on if you were to just hash this uh, you may get a hash value which may or may not work but you would not know why it works or it does not so returning the actual string is helpful in you trying to figure out what the conversation is now the final point about conversations is well conversations are not easy there is no one click solution to your conversation data comes in in different forms and sizes you can have phones emails things formatted differently you can also have rooms that may be busy or there may not be so there is no way to just say okay we're going to do it one way and do it for every project if you're working on a vendor side you're uh, perhaps an analyst or project manager well it's if, in my opinion it's part of your job to look at the data analyze and figure out the best way to present it to your client if you see a slack chat that is uh, pretty much nothing is happening in it and maybe people go in there once a week and there are a couple of messages here and there well you don't want to break it up by day it will make no sense whatsoever however if you have a room like tech support where people are messaging all the time then yes that does make sense to break it up by day in fact maybe you even want to break it up by hour you know so it is up to you to understand data that you're dealing with and figure out the best way to present it to your client all right if you have any questions about this uh, feel free to email me nick at hashtag legal.com and i will see you in the next chapter of this video manual